It certainly sounds good, end poverty and hunger in the developing world. To do that, the United Nations laid out eight individual goals, including ensuring environmental sustainability. Because, as the Millennium Campaign website points out, environmental sustainability is part of global economic and social well-being. For the 1.2 billion people who live on less than a dollar a day, those, that large section of humanity depends immediately and primarily on natural resources. And if environmental sustainability is not guaranteed and ensured, then their livelihoods are in directly at risk. David Reed is with the World Wildlife Fund. He says so far the Millennium Development Goals have produced a mixed record of measurable results. There's great progress in increasing access to clean water, for instance. Considerable progress on reducing deaths associated with airborne and waterborne diseases. Considerable progress in reducing poverty in various parts of the world. By the same token, there are mixed results and not such positive results on other sides. Um, you look at, for instance, the incidence of poverty in Africa, and there really has not been much improvement. Reed says there needs to be a renewed commitment in order to meet the Millennium Development Goals. But Myra Nebel believes the goals may have been unrealistic from the start. So I don't think that they should be held accountable for not achieving this goal. Ebel is the Competitive Enterprise Institute's Director of Energy and Global Warming Policy. He says the world economic slowdown has hindered progress, although there has been some advance in reducing dire poverty. Most of it has come from the capitalist economy, and the fact uh, that that progress has slowed is really due to the fact that the world economy is, has been in crisis for the last few years. Uh, until the world economy starts growing again, you're not going to see Africa doing very well because it's the it's the principal engines of growth, the United States, China, Europe, Japan, that pull the poorer countries along. The United Nations Development Program's own assessment of the MDGs varies depending on the project. It predicts, if current trends continue, that the world may actually exceed its target of improved access to drinking water. But the number of people living without basic sanitation will increase to 2.7 billion within the next four years. Conservation efforts have also fallen short. The United Nations says the number of species threatened by extinction continues to grow despite increased investment. And although the rate of deforestation has slowed, the largest net losses of forests are in the world's most biologically diverse regions of South America and Africa. The problem is, says Abel, there is too much bureaucracy between the United Nations and the various countries to be effective. The answer for achieving the biggest of the Millennium Goals, eradicating world poverty, can, cannot be achieved by the United Nations. It can be achieved by the modern capitalist economy and corporations investing in poor countries and creating jobs and creating economic productivity. The WWF's David Reed calls the Millennium Development Goals aspirational. In order to work, though, he says, the goals have to translate down to the national and local level so that governments can be held accountable. Reed says Tanzania has made great strides in reducing poverty, and he points to Namibia as another success story. But one that WWF has been involved in is the LIFE program in Namibia. And this is a program that was supported by you, the United States Agency for International Development for actually quite a long period of time. And its basic purpose was to help poor rural communities set up conservancies for wildlife. And it has, by doing such, has attracted considerable tourism from around the world. Reed says you can draw a straight line from U.S. resources in the LIFE program to poverty reduction, the creation of jobs, and economic opportunity in Namibia. Here, the World Wildlife Fund, the Competitive Enterprise Institute, and the United Nations are not so far apart. The UNDP says achieving the Millennium Development Goals depends on vibrant economic growth, driven by private enterprises that create jobs and provide goods and services for the poor. Even with a global economic downturn, the United Nations believes at least some of the Millennium Development Goals can be achieved. But it says if current trends continue, by 2015, more than 900 million people will still be living under the international poverty line of $1.25 a day. Rebecca Ward, VOA News.